Nice photos. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's shoot. Let's shoot. Let's shoot. Okay, well, my name is Caucasian. You know, I'm not Caucasian, I'm Caucasian, because I'm half Asian. A little bit about myself, I'm just an aspiring artist representing San Antonio, Texas. And as far as what I'm trying to do, I guess you could just say that I'm trying to stay in my own lane and trying to bring a fresh, refreshing sound to the city, something that they could be proud of. What first got you into music? Oh, man, music, music. Um, it started when I was a kid, you know. Um, I mean, whether, you know, whether it's my parents' musical taste ranging from the, the Mariah Carey's to the Kenny G's to the Journey's to the Frank Sinatra's to the Michael Jackson and the list goes on and on and on and on, you know. So I guess you could say, you know, everything. For the most part but if you were to ask me you know what got me into hip-hop like you know as far as like me wanting to do it let's see i'm a navy brat you know so shout out to all the military brats out there you, you know who you are you know so i was living in uh yakuska japan at the time my dad was in the navy stationed in yakuska a uh, naval base and i went to the library because see during the time this was around like uh, 94 or something like that so they had the you know famous parental advisory sticker on there you know made famous you know brought to us by the legend Luke himself you know Mr. Representative of the two live crew you know so that parental advisory sticker you could not buy a CD unless you were over 18 and when it had that label on it so of course my parents you know hip-hop was new at the time and they were like they didn't understand it they were like oh no we don't want our kid listen to that you can't have that but that didn't stop me from getting it and lucky enough we used to go to this library that was right next to our elementary school Sullivan Elementary School in Yokosuka, Japan the library right next to it and sure enough they had CDs that you could rent you know, and check out for a couple days. And lo and behold, in this book, there was only two CDs in there that were hip hop related. It was Ice Cube's Lethal Injection and Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style. And so listening to those two projects right there, soaking it all in, I guess you could say that's what put me on the path that I'm pursuing right now. And I also got more to say about my pursuit of music at a later time, you know, because I already know there's going to be another question asked about it, so I'll save it until then. Who inspired you to make music? Who inspired me to make music? It was two main artists that inspired me to make music, and it was Juicy J, or you could say 3-6 Mafia, and Eminem. Those two people right there had such an imprint on my soul that I wanted to do this professionally and just actually do it and actually make my mark on this world, you know, make an impact, you know, climb that ladder that everybody wants to climb to eventually get to legendary status, you know, but of course it takes a lot of work, a lot of perseverance and overcoming adversity, you know, which builds character, you know, but it was those two main artists that definitely left an imprint on me. How do you describe the music that you typically, typically create? Well, the music that I typically create is, it's different. It's unique. It's abstract. You know, I like to say that I'm an abstract artist with a wicked twist, you know, because I like to, I like to point out the, I guess you could say, inconsistencies and contradictions of the world, you know, maybe with the way people conduct themselves, how they treat other people you know for example i was i was raised all my life you know for the point sometimes where people were just like oh he's a devil you know like i could see the energy in him there's something about him it started when i was 10 years old going to catholic school because i don't need to get into the specifics but i was a smart little kid that wouldn't just you know when i ask a certain question when i say like well hey i'm reading here in a book you know which 
I don't need to mention which one. There's a lot of great scriptures out there, you know, with a bunch of different similarities that could instill the morals and principles in you to become a good person in this life. But nonetheless, I would point out certain things and I would say like, well, if I'm reading it this way, why are people acting the opposite? Oh, you're thinking too much. You need to just have faith in the book and not ask so many questions because it is basically very devilish of you to even question what's going on. So from an early age, I was very into knowledge, soaking everything in around me. And like, basically I tell everybody this all the time. Like whenever I tell you something, don't ever believe anything I say and don't believe anything anyone else will ever tell you. I don't care what their professional title is in life. They could be a doctor, they could be a cop, you know, or whatever, whoever. Get the information yourself, let it resonate in your soul and trust your gut feeling and come up with your own beliefs. Don't let nobody tear down who you were meant to be. What is your creative process like? My creative process, okay. I'm definitely going to be letting the cat out of the bag in this one right here. And I don't really tell too many people this right here just because, you know, I like to think it's, you know, it's not unique, you know, but basically it's, it's automatic writing, you know, um, it's basically, you know, usually my peak hours of writing are anywhere from 2 to 4 a.m., you know, so I usually, I usually meditate, you know, you know, I like to get in tune, you know, make sure my chakras are vibrating at the right frequency, you know, I might do a couple mudras here and there, you know, just to make sure that, you know, I'm fully relaxed, you know, and the, and the blood is circulating the way it should, you know, and I might, my brother Drew got bangers, by the way, he makes all the beats too, by the way, everything you hear from me, you go holler at Drew if you want a fucking banger, you know, but I'll take his beat, you know, that, that I love and I, and I want to make something too, and I'll zone out with it for like three days, you know, leading up to, you know, you call it a ritual or, you know, my, my practice of writing, you know, or whatever, and then when it gets to that point for me to write, that beat has literally became a part of me already to where I could write to it without even hearing it, you know? So w once I get down to the point of actually creating, like I said, I'll meditate, get my mind and spirit right first. And then after that, I'll play the beat on my Bluetooth speaker, nice little Harmon Cardone, however you pronounce it or whatever. And I'll just let loose, you know? It's just, it just all comes out. You know, like I just sit there, vibe. It's like I think of the first line. It's like a freestyle. So I'll just vibe out to the beat. And, and most nine times out of ten, I already know the first line I'm going to say anyways because I've been vibing out with the beat for so long. You know, so I'll just ride with that line right there. And then everything else is just magic. Who would you like to collaborate with the most? Well, it, it would be my two main influences. You know, like I mentioned earlier, Eminem and Juicy J. I already could see myself in the studio with them in the near future just based off the work that I'm doing and the impact that I'm going to make in the city of San Antonio. You know, because like I said before, San Antonio is the seventh biggest city in the United States of America. And there's definitely no reason why, you know, like there's a lot of greats that done it before. Shout out to Kylie, shout out to Sosa, So San Antonio. And uh, shout out to Rich, Southside Hoodlum over there on the South Side. Man, they definitely got a nice little movement going on over there with Ace the Shooter. Dope ass fucking director, along with my director, Dice, over here. They actually collaborated on some stuff before. But nonetheless, um, I want to collaborate with whoever, you know. And to answer my question, I was just going to answer, but I almost sidetracked myself. I'm really trying to put the, the spotlight on the city in a way that it hasn't been done before. You know, that's why, that's why in my songs, like Say Town Walk, I shout out all the legends who've done it before me. Because I basically took their blueprint, and I'm acknowledging that fact, and showing love and respect whenever I see them. But I'm trying to put my own twist to it. Because really, at the end of the day, I know, at the end of the day, I already have an advantage. You know, and, 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 and I'm taking advantage of that fact through the fact of my skin complexion. You know, people are going to look at me and be like, oh, it's a white dude who could f fucking wrap his ass off. And it's like, yeah, right. And, and I'm definitely doing this with respect for the culture where it came from. Because at the end of the day, this is black music. That's where it came from. Me, I was just a fan, 
you know, who love the energy and the creative spirit of it to where you could just say what's on your mind and everything and people would gravitate toward. So the only thing I could do is treat the culture with respect by not only doing it at a high level, but then turning around after that and bringing the next people up with me. Provide opportunities for people who may not necessarily have that opportunity. So to me, that's what I'm going to do, you know, to respect the culture, to make sure that I don't disrespect it, make sure I shine a good light on it and bring a whole bunch of people with me. And um, did I did I answer that question or uh, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Who would you like to collaborate with the most? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah, I, I did answer that. I drew it out a little bit. But of course, everybody in the city too hit me up, man. Of course, the, I already got a song with uh, So San Antonio. It's going to be my next single called Freaky. That one's going to be a crazy one. Going to run out of room at the West End and everything. And uh, it's going to be crazy, you know. So that's going to be a good one right there. And then, of course, Kylie, you know, I meant Rich. You know, it'd be nice if I could get the Say Town Walk remix going this summer. You know, that'd be dope, you know, to, re to really, really put the spotlight on the city, you know, or whatever, having people who are doing it at a high level representing on one track, which I feel, you know, and of course, I know the fans love me or hate me are going to correct me if I'm wrong, you know, but I feel that this is going to be a song that could definitely represent the city in a good light where people could be proud to say, I'm from San Antonio. If you could go open a show for an artist, who would it be? Well, I mean, if I could open up a show for any artist, I mean, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but obviously it would be, you know, somebody, you know, my two main influences, whether it's Juicy J or Eminem, you know, just based on the draw that they have. You know, if I, if, if I, well, not if, when I work my way to a situation to where I, I garner their attention, of course, just having that cosign and being on tour with them is going to open so many doors. For example, like, like I, I have a dream of freaking performing at a sold out show at the Alamo Dome, like not the Illusion Theater, which is the Alamo Dome, but I'm talking about the whole fucking thing you know, or whatever. And that's why if I was to choose to work with anybody, it would be those two people, you know, like people who are on stadium status, you know, because you imagine somebody like Eminem, I get linked up with him or whatever. Imagine him be like, you know what? Hey, we're going to do a show in your hometown at the Alamo Dome, man. I'm going to headline the shit or whatever, but I'm going to introduce you and shit or whatever. Just imagine, like, like I only, I, like, I just started. I only got like 400 and something followers on my IG, but it's steadily climbing every day, you know. And I'm getting all this love from people. It's a slow grind, but of course, a cosign like that, it'll just blow like the the ceiling off the roof, you know, or whatever. So of course, it would be someone like them, along with the greats in the city, because in the next couple of months, there is going to be shows coming up. You know, nothing confirmed yet. But of course, the greats, like I already mentioned before in the previous interview. Oh, I forgot to mention Live Older, too. I forgot to mention uh, uh, Little Ken, uh, 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 you, you know, Mr. Uh, Prince of Camilitary. You know, shout out to you and everything you got going on over there uh, with the convos app, with Camillionaire and everything. I can't wait to meet y'all one day. But hey, I got a lot of work to do first, right? I got to prove myself. So shout out to everybody that's done it before me, man. Nothing but love. What is one message you would one message I would give my fans is that mind over matter. You could do whatever you set your mind to. You just got to do it. You could say you want to do this shit, whether it's music, whether you want to open up your own real estate business, whether you want to open up your own food truck just to start off, just so you could eventually get your own restaurant. You could do whatever you set your mind to. You just got to, your actions have to line up with what you want to do. Flat out, you know, like it took me three years to get to this point right here. You know, a lot of a lot of adversity, a lot of hard work moving my family around here and there before I finally got everything settled down. I'm a contractor, you, you, you know, driving and everything. Vehicles breaking down thousands of dollars of repairs here and there. But then at the same time, still having the thought that, God, I really want to give this that one shot to, 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 to do it right. You know, and so now I'm finally here. After I went through all the ups and downs, I'm finally in a situation to where my family is taken care of and now I could fully focus on this music. 
but it's not going to happen overnight. You can't sit around waiting for somebody to save you. Because at the end of the day, the ones that got the big bag, the ones that got the big bag that's going to invest in you, they're not going to invest in you if you don't believe in yourself. And how do you show that you believe in yourself? That you're willing to drop the bag on yourself. That you're willing to invest thousands of dollars in your company, your brand. Because you're, you're, you're more than just a, an artist. You know, this is the music business. You know, like, yeah, you may got the creative part on point, but what about, are you handling your business, though? Are you preparing for what you have to do to garner that attention for somebody to come along and say, you know what? He got a little traction already. I could see that he's putting money into his campaign. And if, if I just infused this big old bag right here, it just might blow it through the roof. So my advice to my fans or anybody, no matter what business you want to pursue, make sure your actions in life line up with that. Stay down until you come up, it don't matter if you got the money or not. Don't spend it all. Spend your money like you're broke. Okay, don't, don't be like a lot of these other rappers who want to uh, present themselves like they're already living that life. You know, wearing all this fucking fancy high-end shit and all that, but then they don't have any money to fucking promote themselves. Because you look good. But as far as the music, there's a reason why a year later there's still only like... 300 views, like if that, if that, you know, so just mind your business instead of minding everyone else's business. And when I say mind your business, that means make sure your mind is on your business and make sure you're doing what it takes to eventually make it profitable. Do you sing in the shower? If so, <laughs> Sometimes I don't I don't necessarily sing. I meant like like I'll rap like my shit, like you know, my songs and everything like that. And I might jam some other industry stuff and everything. But usually in the shower, I'm usually quiet in a meditative trance, anyways. To me, that's one of the many meditations I do throughout the day, you know, or whatever. So I'll sit there, vibe out to whatever, and I'm usually just dancing. Or whatever, doing some goofy stuff or whatever. As y'all saw in the Say Town Walk video, I'm not no dancer. I don't dance. But I'm not afraid to put myself out there. You know, I, I'm not afraid to look goofy to entertain you and make you laugh. You know, so so when so like I seen some comments, you know, before that was like saying on my video, like, hey, you gotta work on your dance moves, but you got it, homie, you know, with a 100 emoji, you know? And I'm like, that's love, because that's constructive criticism right there. But you're right, maybe I do need to work on my dance moves, who knows? Maybe I'll be a little usher one day or some shit, you know? But, um, and, but to answer the question, um, no. Usually in the shower, I'm usually just vibing out in my own zone or whatever, just trying to focus on my inner self. If it wasn't for my music career, what I'd be doing, I would still be hustling. Legitimately. You know, let me put that out there. I don't want to make it out to seem like, you know, I'm just, you know, hustling in these streets. No, I don't come from that environment. I, I was blessed enough to not have to do certain things, you know, uh, you know, and when I, a lot of the people that I'm around, you know, they had to do a little this and that, you know, or whatever to survive. And that's why I always had nothing but respect for people like that and I conducted myself that way and that's why I never had any problems. Nobody, all my life, nobody's ever picked a fight with me because I was that cool ass dude who knew that you treat people with respect no matter where they come from and you're gonna get it right back, you know? So, um, I'm sorry, what was the original question again? The original question was, what would you be doing right now Right, right, right. I would, and, and, and my answer was just hustling, you know, just like what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm an independent contractor. I own my own company, Top 4 Courier Service, you know, um, and, you know, I contract with a company called, uh, called MedSprint. You know, they're actually owned by Lab Logistics right now. But they blessed me with an opportunity three years ago to where I could work seven days a week doing overnight shifts if I wanted to, you know, just to be able to get that money, you know, and, and, and that's, that's another key, too. Don't be afraid to work, you know, because whether it's opportunities like this or I used to be homeless in the, in the terrace before 
over there right next to Rutledge on Naco Parent off Parent Vital. And when I was over there in 2015, I was blessed with a position to help me come up working at King Cable where they provided you with a work truck so I could go hook up cable and shit. You know, but when I was doing that, I was doing pretty good, making like 900 a week, which was pretty good, you know, at that time or whatever. You know, somebody who's used to making like $13 an hour where you get like $400 a week net or something like that. You know, to me, that was, oh, shit, and I get my own truck. But then at the same time, the people I was around, people, people got all the opportunities in the world, but they don't want to work. At the end of the day, nothing's stopping them in their backgrounds or nothing like that. You could come over here and work where I'm at. And hustle all day in the heat, but people don't want to get sweaty. People don't want to get dirty. People don't want ants crawling all over them. No, I can't do that shit or whatever. But what are you willing to do to make it happen? Remember that. Where have you performed? Where have I performed? I've only done one show. I've only done one show. It's for a, for a local artist here named Vision. Um, um, the Glory Show that he had about a year or so ago where he got a bunch of uh, all the local artists, got them all together. They recorded their Glory album, you know, and got them all performing and shit. It was cool, whatever. I, I ended up opening that thing, you know. And um, I would like to say that from that performance right there, I definitely made an impact. You know, people saw all the love that I got when I came off stage. It was amazing. And, and you know who you are who gave me love because of what, I, what did I do? I went back into the crowd after I performed because I wanted to see how everybody else did. I didn't want to hang out backstage and, and hang out. Because really, at the end of the day, I didn't have no product, you know, to even, in my mind, stand next to y'all yet, you know? Even though y'all just witnessed what the fuck I just did, to me, I was still on the outside looking in. So I went back out into the crowd, but shout out to everyone that, you know, you know, show me love and everything. That was actually the first time I met Kylie and everything, too. And, you know, he's a real ass dude, you know, like you could you could approach him, talk to him. Even when he went backstage and when he left, as he passed by me, he looked at me. I was like, have a good night, sir. He looked right at me with a smile. Yeah, you too, sir. Have a good night. Real ass dude. Um, a freaking, and, um, and, and, and I don't want to just keep name dropping and everything like that, but that was the first show that I officially did with plenty more to come. What are some of your favorite and least favorite venues? Um, well, you know what? I guess that's really a question that I, I can't even answer yet, you know, because that venue I performed at was off Essex Street, I forgot the name of the place. Uh, downtown or whatever but um it was like an outdoor factory or used to be with the roof torn off with graffiti dope art all up on the walls and everything so that was a dope venue I, I appreciate an outdoor venue like that especially a festival setting or anything like that but other than that ideally you know if I was to pick you know or whatever it definitely would be something like, if not the Alamo Dome, maybe, um, what do they call that over there right next to the AT&T Center? Is it the Majestic or they got like the smaller venue right now? I don't know. Nonetheless, it, you know, it definitely would be a big venue where I could pack in at least 10,000 people. But I got to start out small first. So until then... I'm I'm still working on getting those uh, first thousand pre-sale tickets at twenty dollars a pop, but until I get to that stage right there, we're just you're just gonna have to pay attention to what I do because one thing's for sure is that I'm gonna keep on working. Do you have any upcoming shows? Not yet. I could say yes, you know, unconfirmed because I know for a fact that there's after this coronavirus blows over and everything like that. Yes, I already know there's gonna be opportunities coming to me. But that's all in my head, you know, law of attraction, just attracting that energy towards me. The only thing that I could focus on right now is building my brand so that I can make sure that does happen. How do you feel the internet has impacted your music business? Oh, tremendously. The, 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 the internet, you, you know, opened up a new avenue of promotion that, you know, didn't exist back in the day. Back in the day, it was all about face-to-face, -face, 
organic, printing out the flyers, getting out, shaking hands, kissing the babies. And then, you know, you work your way up to where you can get into some media outlets, like maybe get on radio and then eventually other media outlets out there, you know. But now it's pretty much wide open, which is good in a sense, because you could still do the organic face to face marketing, which is very important. So people get to feel your energy and feel who you are as a person. But now with the Internet, Jesus. You could put a thousand dollars in a Facebook and Instagram campaign and and and, and have over a hundred thousand people see it. That doesn't mean that freaking they're all gonna click on it either. You know, because I've only been running my campaign for about a week. You know, with about twenty five thousand uh, 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 people reached. You know, but I only got about uh, uh, sixteen hundred of them that actually clicked on the link. Which in turn, you could if you check today. Today is uh uh. Let me look. I'm going to break out my phone because the video was released on the 16th, my birthday. Um, it's the 27th today, March 27, 2020. You check, you check my stats right now. I'm, I'm, I'm over 3,100 right now views with like 320 something likes and like 18 dislikes, you know, which comes with the territory. Not everyone's going to like your shit. But what I'm trying to tell you is that that's all due to the promotion that I'm doing online and I haven't even got started with the face-to-face -face promotion and getting out there so that's what it takes you know that's the difference between somebody who doesn't even have a hundred views on their video and somebody like me who's already building brand awareness and has fans reaching out to them telling me how much they love my song and my music from what they heard online at Spotify Apple music and other streaming outlets out there and that's, like I said, that's what distinguishes somebody who's serious about their business and somebody who's just doing this as a hobby for fun. Because, like, one thing's for sure is I don't spend all this money that I'm spending to not get a return. I'm not doing this for kudos and say I did this and that to whatever. You know what I'm saying? I did this to make some fucking money. And, and in, in, in my opinion, everyone else should be doing the same thing. What is the most trouble you've ever gotten into? <laughs> the most trouble I gotten into, uh, I mean, like it started, like it goes back into the story where I was talking about the parental advisory sticker when I was in. Now this is the smallest part of it right here, but you know, I mean, whether it was me stealing over fifty CDs from the Navy Exchange, that was until the day that freaking I brought in this guy named. I'm not gonna say his name. Let's just say C M. You know, if you watching me in Yokosuka, Japan, you know who I'm talking about. C M. That's his, that's his initials right there, but he wanted to come in on it and everything, but he was a little shook and everything or whatever, so you could tell. I remember watching the surveillance footage, like, oh my God, this motherfucker just gave away everything. No, no wonder I was caught. But yeah, I did, I did whatever I could to get my hands on some music because my parents wouldn't buy it for me, whether it was whatever they had at the library or whether I was stealing the shit just to go home and put my headphones on. And then when I got older, I mean, maybe it's dealing with the wrong female and getting a bullshit assault case, you know, that ended up getting dismissed or whether it's getting a bullshit fucking uh, misdemeanor charge for possession of marijuana. But other than that, nothing. They, I, I, I mean, honestly, I, if, if you ask me, I'm just a normal person who made some mistakes in their life. You know, nothing too serious and nothing to really brag about. And I wouldn't have even brought all this stuff up if it wasn't asked. The best advice you've been given? The best advice I was given, um, I believe it's um, what I mentioned earlier, to stay down until you come up, um, act broke even though you got it. You know, just because you got the money out there don't mean you need to try to live up and keep up with the Joneses and try to portray to the people that you're living a certain lifestyle when really you're living paycheck to paycheck to live up that lifestyle. Like I could have I could have had a nice little spot in Stone Oak with the money that I make. Anybody here from San Antonio knows where Stone Oak is at, you know, but really at the end of the day, if I did that, I would have been I would have been like lifestyle poor. All my money would have been to pay for this expensive ass spot, you know, with property taxes and everything that comes with it, you know. And, you know, I meant like, you know, don't get me wrong, my family is well taken care of, you know. So we stay in a nice little one bedroom, all bills paid apartment. I'm not afraid to say that, you know, because at the end of the day, 
if I didn't do that. And, and it's renovated, by the way, too, so it don't look like shit. That's why I went there, too. I was like, this, is, this was meant for, for me to live here. But I did that so I could save up and have the extra funds to push a campaign the way I feel it should be done. I'm not saying it's the way it should be done. I'm saying this is how I feel it should be done. Me putting my money up, whatever it takes to have a professional sound, professional video, and putting the money behind promotion. Because nobody's going to know about your brand if you don't promote. Tagging 100 people on your Facebook every day is not going to do it. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you, but that ain't it. If you could change anything about the industry, what would it be? Well, I, honestly, I wouldn't change nothing about the industry. The industry is thriving, in my opinion. Money's flowing in, especially with the money they're making off streaming services right now. The whole perception, you know, yeah, CDs died and everything like that. But I mean, like, freaking, that's a, you know, vinyl died at one point. Tape died at one point. See, it, it's just now it's, it's a new medium. You know, it transferred from ownership to subscription-based. You know, which is cool, in a way. Because, you know, for $10, $15 a month or whatever, you could have access to the entire catalog and not have to worry about holding a physical copy, you know, so the music industry is thriving, you know, so, and, you know, I mean, really at the end of the day, it's really up to the individual what they make out of their opportunities, you know, like, as long as you, as long as you study business and you're on your business and you know what you're worth, you know, um, you shouldn't get screwed over in this industry, that's just my opinion. You know, especially if you got your business right, you got a good lawyer on deck to be able to go over certain things, you know. And really, at the end of the day, don't sign too early, you know. You're definitely not going to get a favorable contract if you sign too early. You want to build that brand first. Be self-sustained. You want to come to the label. In my opinion, you want to come to the label like, I got at least 300000 already, you know, ready to promote. I don't need your money. I just need your, I just need your channels, you know, like your, your, your promotional channels, you know, all your media outlets, you know, I need access to that. And then with my funds, it should blow everything up, you know, or whatever. So it should in theory, right? Uh, but um, to go back to what you were saying, um, I'm pretty sure um, I covered all bases with that question. Lastly, what's next for you? What's next for me? What's next for me? I'm going to keep working. Um, um, I, gotta, I got the next video I'm going to put out with, uh, uh, with Dice you know, uh, uh, one of the best directors here in the city is going to be a video called Freaky. And that's going to be with uh, a local legend here, So San Antonio. Um, I got him featured on there. You know, and that's my brother. That's my big bro right there. Out of everybody, I fuck with a lot of people in the city and, 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 and didn't really get a good reception. And it's crazy how it would take one of the legends to freaking get behind me, you know, and say, fuck him. You know, like, 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 like his saying it, like that's his trademark, I guess you could say, fuck them. Fuck them if they don't like you. I know what type of person you are. You're a stand-up person. You got high morals and principles. You're all about helping people and bringing the next person up. There's no hate in your blood. You want to see everybody succeed. And that's why I'm blessed that the one person who's fully behind me, as far as artist-wise, is a legend here in the city. And if you don't know about Soul San Antonio, you need to look him up. He's, he's put in plenty of work for over two decades now, and you should know about him. But um, that's going to be the next single right there, Freaky. I'm not going to tell you the details about like the video and everything like that. That's something you're going to have to see yourself. But one gift that I have for you at the end of this video is I'm, I'm gonna, the song is going to be available for you to hear for the first time right here. And that's what's coming up next, along with another song that I got called The Industry parentheses your bitch now I'm a very metaphorical rapper and when you see that title the industry parentheses your bitch you gotta wonder like what the hell is he talking about okay let's just say sometimes people get in certain positions and they want to stop the next person from succeeding they might fuck them over with bad business practices or whatever try to break their spirit you know or whatever which is definitely not the move because really at the end of the day you might have just burned a bridge that you might have you might've needed or you might not need it, you know, or whatever. But at the end of the day, people make their decisions and I just got to roll with who I feel like is fully behind me 100%.
you know, so look out for everything. Drew got bangers. My brother got all the beats. He's going to have his website. It's, it's already up. There's no beats on there. But DrewGotBangers.com, he's about to have that updated pretty soon for everybody, you know, who wants a beat, whether you want to lease it or get the exclusive rights. Um, uh, 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 hit up Jess Dino, you know, like he's, he's part of the team too or whatever. Uh, my engineer, my brother. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be doing a lot of stuff with the photography and everything like that, too, you know, which I'm excited about, which you already got started. Um, reach out to Dice Photos, you know, like if you definitely want that industry quality video. And um, um, that's that's about it. Oh, uh, store opening up soon on 1999 Golf Mart. But there's more information on that soon. That's going to be the spot where you could get anything top four car Asian or so San Antonio related. We're gonna have a t-shirt print, and a, uh, a presser in the back and everything, you get that service with a list of other things that's gonna come also. We're gonna have concerts out in the front of the parking lot, we're gonna block everything off, have a stage DJ jumping castles for the kids, food, barbecue pits, you name it. You know, so look out for that soon. Shout out to everybody that supported me and remember to always show love. Peace. Up and down, round and round, fucking this wild bitch upside down. In and out, round and round, look up to me as I'm putting it down. Up and down, round and round, fucking this wild bitch upside down. In and out, round and round, man, I love my sweat dripping in your mouth. You little freaky little bitch, little leaky little bitch, little kinky little bitch. You little freaky little bitch, little leaky little bitch, little kinky little bitch. You little freaky little bitch, little leaky little bitch, little kinky little bitch. She pulled out this dick while she bent over quick while sucking this dick, you little freaky bitch. I feel like a hundred million bucks. He had all bills from what me and Drew cook out the crock pot. Man, y'all know the deal. Got a car to peel, and I'm trying to lick that morning dew, make that ass pop. Baby so wet, I canoe with two fingerprints, leave an imprint, and she'll take off in a minute. Come hard, she eat a spinach. I can tell she does tricks like driving in a rental for a visit. Dreams very vivid, loose is how I'm living, always forgiven. Like the Lord tonight, when we sin and just repent, it's a bet we'll be winning. I just smoked a joint, your bitch pussy so moist. I just smoked a joint. Just to prove my damn point That I'm the fucking man, I make you love me That's God's plan, bitch, don't question it Just let loose as I spread that cup boost We'll play duck, duck, goose, then I'm jetting, bitch Unless you make a huge imprint I'm a soul, this one's heaven sent She freaky but look innocent Suck it all like a straw, so benevolent The cat Mickey D's, I'm loving it Up and down, round and round Fucking this wild bitch upside down In and out, round and round Look up to me as I'm putting it down Up and down, round and round Fucking this wild bitch upside down In and out, round and round Man, I love my sweat dripping in your mouth You little freaky little bitch Little leaky little bitch Little kinky little bitch You little freaky little bitch Little leaky little bitch Little kinky little bitch You little freaky little bitch Little leaky little bitch Little kinky little bitch She pulled out this dick While she bent over quick While sucking this dick You little freaky bitch I thought of this time That she better be thought Look in her eye I know she better keep going Catch it every time She don't care how you Suck it till it's dry, taking care of that butt She use a lot of spit, make it dance on that shit Take a list, make it romance on the dick Make it stiff, she know how to stand up a dick Make a girl using no hands on the shit I can feel it in my toe, that she snatching my soul Make me unload when the back of that door Make me explode while I'm backing up slow Did she know I gotta go, getting back on that road I call her when I need her, just gotta send her at it Now she following the leader Grabbing on the fatty while she swallowing the meat up And when she takes daddy, she around and wanna meet up Hey, is she a freak? Yeah, she know she is she just like to show me how much of a hoe she is She just like to show me how much of a pro she is It turn her on when she do the inappropriate Hey, is she a freak? Yeah, she know she is She just like to show me how much of a hoe she is She just like to show me how much of a pro she is It turn her on when she do the inappropriate Like it when the motion is Up and down, round and round Fucking this wild bitch upside down In and out, round and round Look up to me as I'm putting it down Up and down, round and round Fucking this wild bitch upside down In and out now, round and round, man, I love my sweat dripping in your mouth. You little freaky little bitch, little leaky little bitch, little kinky little bitch. You little freaky little bitch, little leaky little bitch, little kinky little bitch. You little freaky little bitch, little leaky little bitch, little kinky little bitch. She pulled out this dick while she bent over quick while sucking this dick. You little freaky bitch.